so we are performing the lab as I'll show you the topology that this is my lens machine this is my sofos firewall this is my DMZ area where I have my web server or RDP okay attendance server whatever it is okay and this is my van side where my ISP is connected now here is one remote machine or you can say outside user who wants to access my DMZ server so this is the LAN and uh, so here under this DMZ as an example I took it as Windows 7 machine my LAN machine is Windows 10 from where I am managing the whole Sophos firewall and outside system is my my own machine on which I am performing the VM okay so basically my van IP address is 192.168.10.138 the LAN IP address is 172.16.16.16 and this is 10.10.10.10 is the default gateway okay and the server IP address is 10.10.10.12 okay so as you can see here on my screen as we already discussed about our topology so this is my Windows 7 machine which is connected to port C port A is the LAN port B is the WAN side okay and as I said the port 2 WAN IP address is 192.168.10.138 okay without having a further delay let's get started so first we go to our Windows 10 machine and here on the LAN side I have configured to the Sophos dashboard and let's go the first step is to go to rules and policies under rules and policy go to net rules and click on add rule go to server access dnet now here it is asking us to add the server private IP address okay so here if you have any IP address of the server no we didn't have as of now so first we have to create it before that I just go to my Windows 7 machine so this is my Windows 7 machine here we go to CMD here you can see that 10.10.10.10 .10 is the default gateway 10.10.10.12 .10 is my server IP address okay here we go back we cancel this we go to host and services okay now click on add we need to add as our RDP because we want to take remote access then the IP address is 10.10.10.12 okay save now we go to rules and policies go to net add add net rule we go to dnet correct now here we select remote access which is the private IP address of our server click on next now here it asks us the to specify the public IP address through which the user can access the server so we need the WAN interface IP address so this is our port B IP address correct as you can see here this is port B and as I said the IP address is 10.138 click on next now here it asks us about the services so here we have to mention the services that we can access on the server correct so let's do it as any so let's do it any as any other service are allowed as of now if you can allow RDP also you do it if you want to do HTTPS as a web server you also do it correct click on next now it it is uh, it is asking for the 
devices and the networks from the external source that needs to access to the internal servers let's do it any click on next now this is before our deployment this is the review of our selection and you can see based on the selection just click on save and finish correct let's hold on for a while okay so the NAT has been created and as we discussed before that while you configure a DNAT policy a loopback rule and reflexive NAT rule both will create it by default you do not have to create it and we already discussed about the working and the usage benefit of both of the NAT first is loopback the other one is reflexive okay now the next step is now click on firewall rules so here you can see that our DNAT rule has been created once you create the DNAT under NATing so you can see that DNAT to remote access server it gives us the description and you can select the rule group to automatic I'll just select as none if we allow the log log the traffic we do it okay so here you can see that from when zone any of the network or devices we didn't schedule anything so all the time then it goes to the DMZ correct via port B as we said that the traffic from outside first reaches to port B that's why we gave port B the services are any correct just click on save and if we go to the NAT rule that we created so this is the NAT rule that we created correct so here you can see that the source is any destination is port B correct services are any then SNET original then here you can see the destination NAT so which is the remote server that we gave the DMZ one correct and this is also original as port address translation now you can see that the inbound interface is port B and outbound is A any so from outside the inbound is port B that's why here it's written port B correct so this is uh, the this is the NAT rule for the DNAT now let's check our Windows server that whether it is accessible or not okay so here uh, you can see that I'll go on my random machine and uh, I'll access so let's type 192.168.10.138 okay which is our WAN IP address click on connect so here it is asking for the admin credential press ok so here you can see that I am accessible to OVI PC1 here you can see that I am accessible to that press yes so you can see that we are accessible to our Windows 7 machine ok to also check the log files as well we can do it just go to log viewer here in our in our log traffic we can see that that dnet to remote rule where from port B it's the traffic is moving from port B and it exit exit from port C correct so you can see that 10.1 Okay, 10.138 correct which is source port and destination port so the RDP port is 3389 correct so which works properly okay so this signifies that we can able to access our web server from outside we can also go to rules and policies go to firewall rules and under that you also going to see there is in and out traffic 
like in kbps speed so which means that our rule works properly okay guys this is all about dnet thanks for watching